Hey, what's up everybody? On today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to download and install the Dolphin emulator for the PC. Now what this is, is actually a GameCube slash Wii emulator that runs in full HD 1080p or higher on your computer. Now first thing you want to do is go to dolphin-emu.org. If you can't see it, I'll leave a link down in the description. You know, you want to go to this website. You're going to be presented with this uh, download button over here. If not, there's always a download button right on the top. You know, you want to download the newest version of Dolphin. Now, as of this moment, the newest version is 5.0. You can get this for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So I'm going to click on this little download link over here. It's going to show you the downloads for the platform of your choice. As for myself, I'm going to be downloading the Windows X64. Click on that. You know, you're going to let the download download. Once it's finished, you're going to click on run. Click on run. And of course, this is the application installation. I agree. Everything checked. Next. It's going to show you where it's going to install the files. Install. Give it like a minute and a half, two minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. You know, just let that finish downloading and installing. There we go. All right, cool. All right, so once it's already downloaded and installed, open up the program. You know, uh, it's, it's not going to come with any games, so you're going to have to go online and find the games for yourself. But it does play, let me see what types of files it does play. All right, it plays all GameCube slash Wii files, ELF, DOL, GCM, ISO, you know, you get the picture. As for myself, I already downloaded the Mario Kart Wii, New Super Mario Brothers, Skyward Sword, Smash Brothers Brawl. You know, before you start getting into any games, you want to hook up your controller and of course the graphics so uh, let's go through that right now so uh, of course if you're running on the PC hopefully you'll have a uh, Xbox 360 controller Xbox one controller you know of course turn on your controller then go over to the controls and as for myself I have Xbox one controller so I'm gonna be going over to port one standard controller go over to configuration and it's actually going to say uh, this right over here. X input slash zero slash gamepad. That's what I'm running on. If you're going to be playing it and you don't really have a controller, you can always set the buttons to the mouse and keyboard, which I really don't advise. So uh, on this one, we're going to be going to the gamepad. And of course, this is going to show you all the buttons as if it was configured for the Wii, Wii controller. So... A button, B button, X, Y, Z, start, up, down, see uh, buttons, control sticks, C sticks, triggers, D-pad. You know, you just click on it, hit the button on the control, and it'll set it. As you can see, C stick is moving, left analog is moving, so the controller is good. Click on OK, and of course, press OK. If you have a Wiimote, you can also configure that also. But me, I'm not running one, so I'm going to click on none. All right, now go over to config. And of course, for you to get the best speed, I would advise having enable dual core. And if anything, the first two checked. And of course, JIT recompiler. That'll be the second to last. And press OK. Now you can go over to graphics. On basic back end, leave it on OpenGL. You can set your resolution. Me, I'm running at 1920 by 1080. And of course, I've used full screen. You should have a show FPS. That way you can see how many frames you're getting on the side. And render to main, main menu. All right, enhancements. I tend to leave it on X, 3X native, 1920 by 1584. 
for 1080p. Anti-aliasing, I leave that off because uh, it's, it's weak. Come on now. You don't really need any uh, perfection for it. And uh, anascropic filtering, I leave it on times one. And I leave scaled EFB copy. And then everything else pretty much alone. So close that. You know, once you've already have a game downloaded, click on file, hit open. Me, I have my games on my desktop, so I'm going to navigate to one of my games. This over here is actually the Mario Kart game, MK Wii. That means Mario Kart Wii. I'm going to click on that. It's going to open up the game. Now that we have the controller set, you can just click into the game and get it started. Now this does support online versus mode, meaning you could be on your computer and you could have a buddy in his house and you guys could play each other. So uh, I don't have any friends at the moment, hopefully that'll change. But uh, it's, you know, just basically go through the process as if it was a regular Wii or a GameCube. Yeah, I'm gonna go over single player. Now sometimes you might see little artifacts or little uh, colors going crazy. That's just the main menu. Once you're actually in the game, it's smooth sailing from there. There you go. It's my nigga Yoshi. I like this yeah, manual, baby. There we go. You guys get the picture. All right, let me show you guys how to get the online working, just in case you want to play one of your friends. Or else you can also, I think, do split screens, which is pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna get out of this and the current emulation. Now, let's say if you want to play against a buddy, click on Tools, go to Start Net Play, click on that. Now. There's two options. There's direct connection, which you actually have to get your friend's IP address and set some ports. So you put in the IP address right over here, and then you uh, port forward. You know, if you're into computers and you know what you're doing, set some ports aside and just name them whatever you want. Well, number them as whichever you feel fit. And of course, you can put a nickname for yourself right over here. And, you know, that's if you want to connect to a friend. They have to tell you their IP address. And both of you have to set the same ports. And then you just press connect. Or else you can host the game. You know, same thing. You set a port. And you select the game that you want to run. And then you hit host. And your friend will be able to connect to you. Now, this way is kind of a pain in the ass. So what me and my friends like to do is go to Traverse Server, which you just, let's say if I'm hosting, I pick the game, I click on host. Now it's going to say room ID. I just click on copy right over here. It'll copy these numbers. And then I can just send the numbers over to my buddy if he's on Skype or anywhere else or email it to him. He puts in those numbers. He clicks connect. And we're both in the same room. He's going to show up over here. Now, once you're both in the room, you see where it says ping. It's actually going to show how many milliseconds the connection is between you guys. So, like, let's say if he's 60 ping, you know, for every 15 ping, you should put up the buffer. So, if he's 60, that's 4. So I would leave it on four. That way the connection is nice and synced. You know, if anything, I would try it the way it is. If it's lagging a little bit, just put up the buffer just a little bit. And then hit start, and the game will start. Of course, both of you have to have the same game in order for this to work. But uh, it's, that's pretty much it. You can s 
you know, assign controller ports in case you want to switch yourself to second, third. Of course, you can have up to four people joining you. So that's pretty cool. And that's pretty much it. If anybody likes, you know, um, don't be afraid to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, everybody have a good day and have fun.